You could say the Murphy administration was in a tough spot. Stop the spread of COVID in a prison population left vulnerable by tight quarters and comorbidities, releasing those already headed for parole or time served, over 2,000 last week in scenes both poignant and frustrating. You met James in a Michael Hill story last week, suffering from Parkinson's and other physical ailments. He found himself alone, broke, and far from his original home in Michigan. We checked in on him today. My prescriptions ran out today. The rest of them run out on Monday. I have all the prescriptions, but no insurance and and no money to get them done. But James did get some help. Groups like the Volunteers of America and New Jersey Reentry Corporation were at the Trenton Transit Center and other spots across the state to fill a void left by the Department of Corrections, which seemed unable to handle providing emergency assistance to the men and women who were released from prison into a community already reeling from a global pandemic. If you took David Cruz or Jim McGreevy and dropped us into any rural or suburban or urban community without a birth certificate, without food, without housing, without medicine, and without a job, I am telling you, I would be, candidly, I'd be fighting to survive Jesse Sharp actually got out ahead of last week's cohort of inmates. He's lucky to have landed with family. He says he's been offered drug counseling and alcohol abuse treatment, but he doesn't drink or get high. Meanwhile, he's still waiting on a state ID and other documents he needs to access government services. You want to do something, send me somewhere where I can get an ID. Send me somewhere where I can get a job. Send me somewhere where I can get a place to stay. Instead of sitting there telling me, so well, the federal government is giving us X amount of money to send you to this program, so you have to take this program as part of your pro uh, of being released. Why would I have to take a drug program if I don't get high? You know, it's the level of trust that individuals have to have when they're coming out of the criminal justice system. They've already felt as if that system has failed them, um, and then they don't know any of us. And why would they think that, you know, anything anyone says is exactly what they're going to do? Frank Piero says the New Jersey Reentry Corporation may have saved his life. Through the services here, they have a lot of access to actually, actually good employment opportunities where I can make a decent living. So basically I could get a job, and sustain myself and pay for my own food and my own rent. I, I see all of that in the future for me here. But for every Frank, there's more than one James. I'm in a fog. My brain is, uh, I have problems, man. I didn't know they were so bad while I was in prison, but coming home and, and trying to perform, you know, out here, I'm having a lot of trouble. A spokesman for the Department of Corrections said today, our social service team met with each person to assess personalized needs and work to connect them with a variety of resources prior to departing our facilities. A number of individuals declined our services via signed waiver. With another 1,500 inmates set for release over the next few months, the hope is that the department will be better prepared so that inmates don't go from the cauldron of the inside to the fire outside. I'm David Cruz, and J Spotlight News.